If I'm gonna be real with you guys, this career, this job that I do on YouTube is so incredibly awesome. I'm so blessed and it has so many ups, but I'd be lying if I said it didn't have its downs too. And it's been an absolute roller coaster of a journey the last couple years. And I'm sort of sitting here having a bit of a moment right now. If you guys haven't already guessed it, this video is incredibly special. And I think I'm sort of just appreciating that hard work does pay off and your dreams do come true if you keep pushing at them guys. Cause today I get to tell you about something that I've been hiding for a year and a half and today's the day i finally get to tell you all about it i've got a brand new highfield patrol 660 and i'm telling you right now none of this would have happened without you guys watching at home so i just want to firstly say thank you from the bottom of my heart but i don't want to get too emotional right now so i'm going to pack the rest of the gear we've got a cracker day today blue skies no wind and i'm going to see you guys out on the water don't go anywhere because this one's going to be an insane mission <laughs> So that has turned the meat completely white. It's not cooking it, but it's doing something to it that makes it edible. That is phenomenal. Ooh, I just saw a little sea snake coming into the light. Just found some lumps of like coffee rock. <laughs> Sounds like a Tesla. Okay, I just started her up. Pretty much the mission is I've packed a whole heap of camp gear, spear guns, rods, all that good stuff. We're gonna be living on the boat here. I'll show you bits and pieces throughout this video, but the first thing we gotta do is charge over to the island while the tide's up to go for a spear. Wow, this is so surreal. Here we go. First fish on the new boat. Big tuna, man, big tuna. They're going skids. I'm right into the middle of them here. Let's go. Come on. Oh, they just went down like that. Did you guys see how quick they just went down? I'm out here at my favorite spot and we're gonna be camping overnight on the boat and we're gonna be trying to catch our own food. I've got some loose plans on what we can do and how we can get food, but there's minimal stuff in this fridge to keep me going. So I need to catch my own fresh seafood out here and just enjoy this brand new boat. I'm sure a lot of you guys, especially the boaties, are really curious about this whole setup, all the bells and whistles in it and stuff like that. I've pretty much built this thing from the hull to what it is now, partnering with Highfield. So firstly, I just wanted to say a massive, massive thank you to Highfield. They made my dreams come true and they built me this boat that's perfect for my adventures. I don't want to talk about all the fancy stuff on this thing just yet. There is a fair bit, but for the first mission, I just wanted to come out here, use the boat and have you guys uh, enjoy it. So comment down below if you want me to drop a full walkthrough, maybe next video. And for all those curious, I can actually run through the entire boat, tell you guys all about it. But for now, I have to race this tide. I gotta get my dive gear on and I gotta get in these mangroves to see if I can get myself a feed. Cause I'm bloody hungry and the day has just begun. Yew! Let's do it. I just landed the drone and there's a massive shark that was literally just cruising past the front of the boat. So um, I really hope I don't bump into him, but we gotta get him, we gotta get a fish. It's super high, so bigger predators will be here, but um, I got my gun on me, so we should be all right. This back seat is loaded up with all of the crap, my swag's in there, everything. Got a bunch of dive gear, mask, weight belt, shark slayer, and I got some fins here. And that should be just about it. I've only got one hour to shoot a fish before this drains out. So fingers crossed we get something and fingers crossed that big old shark stays away from me. Very shallow. Bloody flooded right in front of my face, I missed him. Damn.
That's so weird. Looks like a mud crab hole in there. Didn't think mud crabs were out here. I needed some brekkie, that was about it. We got a little brim here. Definitely not your trophy fish, but uh, something to whack on the pan to give me a bit of food this morning. <sighs> I was hoping for some more stuff out there, but it was pretty quiet. So we just grabbed what we could and we'll kick on. Oh, there's that shark again, guys, look at him. I just came back with the fish, so he must have been hanging around here the whole time. But there's the shadow heading off. Hey mate! There's two turtles right there. Hey buddy! Watch out, there's a shark cruising around. Oh, look at those stingrays! There's so many! Alright, we're gonna make our way up. So sick. Definitely getting hungry, so I might cook that broom up. Might make a little wrap, or I'll just have the fish, I'm not sure, but we'll get the cooker out. I bet you had no idea, but if I pop this up, got myself a table, and I can do a cook up right here at the back of the boat. Don't even have to step foot onto the beach, which is exactly what I wanted. So awesome, guys. Can't wait. Cannot believe the first fish on the deck of the boat is a brim. That is not good. I actually don't have a name for the boat yet. I've been thinking for months while this thing's been getting built, and I just cannot think of a name. So I'm going to leave that with you guys. Drop down some comments below. I guess the comment with the most likes or, or one that I like the most. I'll choose it, and I'll tell you guys in the next video what it's called. If you're wondering what the hell this is at the back, it's actually a giant ladder. I'll put that down. Makes it nice and easy to get out. And it gives me a bit of a platform right here and I'm actually gonna fill it on this. And we've even got a shower right here to fresh water. This is sort of where I'm gonna be preparing fish and things like that, I reckon. And then we've got the cooking station right here. Bits and pieces there. It's all coming together, guys. This is so sick. This will actually be the first meal I've cooked on the boat. The back edge of this blade sort of acts as a good way to get the scales off. So I'll just do that quickly on each side. There we go. Get rid of all those scales. Clean up the fish. He is ready for the pan. The pan. <laughs> I forgot the freaking pan. <laughs> oh, I just went into my cooking bag here. There's a chopping board. There's a few uh, emergency rations here. And there's no pan. This is actually bad. What am I gonna do? I've got everything set up, ready to go. And I friggin' forgot the pan. Holy crap. Talk about all the gear and no bloody idea. What the fuck? It is what it is. We're out here. Um, there's no way to get a pan, so I'm gonna have to improvise. I think I might, um... Oh! <gasps> actually, you know what I got? You know what I got? Hold up. Have a look in here. Yes, man. Ow. Broke my elbow. That hurt. Okay, yep. I can work with this. Plan B, we're gonna do some like sashimi, but we're gonna try and cook it in the acidity of the lemon, ceviche style. Yes! Yes! They gotta pack the lemons. I was freaking out because I didn't have the pan. I thought that was done. The video was screwed, but we got these. We're gonna keep going, guys. Nothing's gonna stop us out here. We got some lemons. We got a knife. We're gonna cut it up. We'll find something to put it in. And we're gonna do ceviche. Yes! I pretty much have a little bit of cheese left for wraps, so what I'll do is we'll ditch the cheese, and this container right here, I'm gonna cut the brim up, I'm gonna put it inside this container, we'll cut the lemons up, we'll squeeze all the juice into it, and we'll just let it sit for like maybe 20 to 30 minutes. Oh, look at that, a beautiful fillet. No wastage there, and we're gonna use this frame for bait because you never know what's gonna be lurking by the back of the boat tonight. So what you wanna do is grab yourself a lemon, make sure you roll it up because that gets the most amount of juice out of it. Preferably get a sharp knife. What is this? It's my dive knife, that should be sharper. And pretty much you just wanna pour all of the juice into the container here. Fair few seeds went in too, but that's all right. So with all that juice in there like that, we're just gonna shut the lid 
I don't even know if this is gonna be very good, but we'll mix it up a bit. Nope, <laughs> okay. Do not put this upside down because it will leak. We'll have a feed of that in about 20 to 30 minutes. Improvisation at its absolute finest. <laughs> oh man. All right, I've found my anchorage. I'm actually not far from the beach. Um, I'm sitting at about seven meters of water, and if I show you guys this, it's a little bit happening. Holy crap. I actually don't know what that is. I literally have not had a transducer for the last like year and a half on the boat. So this is ridiculous to me, but that was something. Something's, look at that. I reckon that's a fish swimming under the boat. I don't even know what that is. I think this is about ready actually. I might pop it open and try some of our uh, ceviche brim. So that has turned the meat completely white and that's pretty much what it does. So it's not cooking it, but it's doing something to it that makes it edible. Oh. Oh, that's good. That is phenomenal. Even skin on. Wow. I really hope something comes up to the back of the boat, but we might do a little bit of fishing. We might not. I'm not sure, but we'll just see how we go. Enjoy the sunset and um, finish off this brimbo. That sun is set and now I've got to set up my swag, but I'm not exactly sure where. There's two spots I could probably run it. I reckon we either lay it over the chair, fridge and anchor well right here. Oh, the, uh, the fridge is a bit high. The other alternate is right here. Now this is a perfect spot to lay. Swag's probably gonna be a bit wide for it, so I might be falling down into there. I'm not sure, I think I might run it at the top end, give that a go, and if my back's cooked, I can come down here a bit later on. Once I have a bit more time to figure this boat out, I'm thinking of stringing from here all the way to the ladder over there, like a nice hammock setup. So yeah, let me know if any of you guys run a hammock in your boats. It'd be awesome if you guys had some ideas. So drop them down below. I've anchored up so, so perfectly right on the drop off. So there's a big ledge that runs down and it pretty much goes from eight meters to 15 meters. You can sort of see it from a bird's eye view. When it gets darker, hopefully we can send some bait down or see what's happening. See if anything comes up to the boat really. running straight on that fridge back. Yeah, I reckon I can do it. I won't lie, this is one of the better views I've ever had out of the swag. And as soon as I wake up, I'll be able to see how glassy that water is. And I'm feeling pretty grateful, just chilling out here, literally in a body bag with my spine bent over a fridge, but somehow I'm that content and I'm just so happy to be out here. So thanks again to Highfield. Thanks again to you guys. I'm living my dream right now. It's There's just something different about being on the water as opposed to like parked up on the beach over there with a the swag. We'll just wait a little longer for that light to just fully disappear because I want to show you guys this in the complete dark. We've finally lost pretty much all of that light over the horizon right there. And now it's time to show you what I've been waiting for all friggin' day. I feel like a little bit of a kid for some reason, but check this out. First of all, we got the courtesy lights. That lights up the deck, all nice and blue around. There's bed. But here's my favorite part. I think you've already guessed it. The underwater lights. Here we go. Did you see it? Can you see it? Check this out. It's friggin' awesome. Nice and blue so we can see if something big comes up here, if there's squid or things like that. I've always wanted it, I finally got it, and I'll never own another boat without it. The current's absolutely ripping, which is not great, so I may have to go in a bit shallower a bit later on when I go to bed. That was the marker of my, of my anchor point, and I've drifted this far down here. I guess I'll just go in a bit closer and, um, and re-anchor, just let more line out. Cause... All right, I got a piece of our brim. I'm gonna send it down right here, see what happens. I just saw a little sea snake coming into the light. We don't really get sea snakes around here. Throwing out the anchor in a way shallower spot here. We're sitting in about four meters on dead low, so should be a little bit safer. I don't know what I was thinking, but I'm about 20 minutes into sleeping and this is not it guys. This is not it. That fridge is in my back. So 
I'm gonna have to move the setup to the back, I think, and see if that works a little better. This is definitely way better. I could 100% sleep like this. So I think that settles it. I'll be sleeping on the back here. I'm gonna leave those lights on just so I can peek out and see where we are. And I'll see you guys bright and early in the morning. We're gonna be trolling before that sun's up, so stay tuned for that. That's not a star, that is my anchor light. But um, yeah, I'm gonna see you guys in the morning. Morning, guys. That was a friggin' awesome sleep. It's about 4.45, my alarm just went off. We're going trolling this morning, baby, let's go. We're up this early, surely means we're gonna catch a big wahoo or mackerel or tuna or something epic like that, so. Favorite part of the morning, that sun has just peaked its head over the horizon and the weather's looking absolutely beautiful. The viz is on, super blue, not much swell, the wind is down. Oh, look at it rising. And just a clean sunrise, no clouds. That looks spectacular. Please get me a fish. That right there is the two meter diver. We're sending that way out the back. And then I'll put this rod, which is a six meter diver, send it a bit closer behind the boat. And then that gives us some variety in the water column and the distance behind the boat. All right, both rods are out. I'm just gonna pick up the speed to trolling speed and adjust this drag to make sure it's sweet. Perfect, all right. Rods are running nice. We begin trolling up and down, mowing the lawn, and uh, yeah, I'll tap back in when we uh, we get a hit. This is the first time trolling with this new setup. I'm basically running these like clamp-on rod holders, and I wanted them in front of my line of sight because the last boat I was running the rod holders here, and I'd have to keep turning around and see if I got a hit. So I'm running them right in front of me. We got the deep diver, the shallow diver, and as I'm cruising along, I don't have to look behind me to see if I'm on. They'll go right next to me, and then I can just lean and grab right here. Makes life a lot easier for me, so we'll see how it performs when we get a fish on though, but for now, I like the setup, looks good. Boy. Oh, we got a fish! Oh my god! Oh, we got a fish, baby. Wonder what we got. Mackerel, please. Pull a tuna. Please be a Spanish mackerel. Oh my god. He's coming up. Here we go. We're about to see first fish. If we don't count that brim from yesterday to be first real fish on the deck of the boat. Oh, we got a tuna, guys. Should we call the boat Mackie? <laughs> oh no, <laughs> this thing's gonna go nuts. <laughs> Not really what I was hoping for, but um, we'll let this guy go, keep trolling. It's good that there's fish around though, that's probably not a bad sign. All right, you ready, mate? There he goes. Swim off strong, all right. First fish trolling in the new boat, we got a bloody Mac tuna, that is so on brand for me. All right, let's get the rods back out, keep going. He double hook up, <laughs> oh, I don't know which one to go for. Oh, damn it. Oh, double hook ups in the new boat. <laughs> What a spot, I'm marking that. That was sick. Oh man, we got a tangle. It's just a bloody mat tuna too. What do we got here? Oh. All right, we'll get him back. It's another mat tuna. We'll sort out this. 
No way. Guys, we are still on with the second rock. <laughs> I've dropped the throttle now. I did not think he'd still be on. All right, another Mac tuna going in the drink. See ya, mate. That's probably enough tuna for today. Let's get these back out and catch something that I actually want to eat. Come on. Why have I not had one of these sooner? That is awesome. <laughs> that is awesome. Yeah. It's about 8.30. No more bites. We just caught three Mac tuna and that's bloody all for today. So I have another idea of something we can do. I'll pull in these rods. I'll shoot back towards the island. See if I can go for a little dive on this coffee rock. Sort of a last resort. Otherwise, it's a pretty bloody good day to be out here. I won't lie. It's bloody awesome. Okay, so this is what I was looking for. I've just found some lumps of like coffee rock. I can see there's dark shadows there. There's more up there. We've got a weird dark cloud coming though, which is probably gonna block that sun. So I'm gonna quickly try and find a nice patch, throw the anchor down on the sand next to it, and then I might do a little drop down and see if I can shoot a fish. There's a piece of coffee rock. This is our sort of last resort to get something. Otherwise, we'll just enjoy the cruise back in this glassy weather, but I do see some nice looking coffee rock right here. Can't see a heap of fish on it. Oh, there goes a the turtle off the front. Never fails to amaze me how quickly weather can change. We cruised into the spot with the sun out, complete glass off, and it's literally raining and windy and looks like crap, but should look a little nice underwater. So let's get in, see if we can shoot a nice eating fish. And then I guess it's home time. Got a little crayfish. It's a nice painted cray. These are awesome eating, but this guy's a little bit small. I think I might let you go, buddy. I'll let you grow up nice and big. We'll put him back down there, guys. But yeah, that's a painted cray. I mean, compared to what I caught in WA, this is ridiculously small. So we'll put him back in his hole. 